Hey everyone, welcome to this webcast. Thanks for joining. I'm super excited that you guys are here. I think this one is going to be really fun. Um, I'm Catherine. I'm the communications manager here at NaNoWriMo. If you don't know me, if you haven't seen me in a, in a write-in or something before. Um, and I am here today. Oops, let me mute my computer. Sorry. Uh, I'm here today uh, with Naomi Kinsman, who's the executive director of the Society of Young Inklings. Um, Naomi, hi. How are you doing? Hello. Yes. So I'm the executive director of Society of Young Inklings, and our organization is all about empowering youth writers through mentorships and online courses and publishing programs. And I'm also an author. And NaNoWriMo is one of my favorite times of year because it's a time when I feel like I get to do the kind of writing that I love most, which is the kind where you just dive in and improvise. And one of the reasons I love that so much is because I am also an actor and a director, and so I have learned how to sort of throw myself into an experience and to see what kind of spontaneous insights come up. And so we're going to be experimenting with that today together. So I'm very excited about playing some games together. So <clears throat> the very first game that we're going to play is going to be something that you'll play at your desk. But before we start, I want to mention that in the description of this video below, there is a PDF that you can download. So if you have done that already, great. Have that at the ready. We'll use it a little bit later. If you did not download it, it's OK. You can certainly just use a blank piece of paper for now. And you can always go back and add in more details later. Um, and if you're watching this after the fact and you want to grab that video, um, that PDF, pause the video, grab it, and then come back and join us. Yeah. So, I, um, real yeah. quick, I, I just dropped that link in the chat as well. So. Perfect. In the chat. I'm gonna I'm gonna try my best to to um, be be looking at you guys in the chat, but there are, there are a lot of you, and it goes kind of quickly. Um, I also realized I forgot to say what NaNoWriMo is. As some of you <laughs> across this video, and uh, have never done NaNoWriMo before, um, or are not familiar with our Young Writers Program, but um, NaNoWriMo basically is. Um, during the it's a challenge to write a first draft of a novel. Um, and November is the time when a lot of people are participating in this challenge. Um, so it's a lot of fun. Um, if you're on, if you're 17 or younger, um, then you can also participate on our Young Writers Program site, um, which is really great. Uh, and it ha you can make your own word count goals, and um, there are lots of cool graphs, and uh, we have a writing space. Um, just a lot of a lot of really. Uh, fun things to help you get into writing. Um, also for educators, there are some really great uh, educator tools. You can create an online classroom. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, our uh, Young Writers Program Director, Mariah, is actually visiting a classroom right now as we speak. So anyway. Excellent. <laughs> Housekeeping done. OK, so I think we're ready. And we are actually going to start with a quick thinking game. And I'm going to flip, flip over to the slide so that we can play this together and you can have a visual. Um, just one moment here. <clears throat> OK, so in this game, you guys are going to be making a quick choice between one option and another. So I want you to imagine that at your table or your desk or wherever you're sitting, there are two buttons, one on the left and one on the right. And you're going to try to make your choice as quickly as possible. And you're going to hit the imaginary button on either side just to kind of make yourself choose quickly. So we're going to start with this one. And I want you, first of all, think of your main character in your story. And if you are, um, if you're not sure who your main character is, or if you have multiple main characters, go ahead and just choose one that comes to mind right now. And this first choice is, if that character were to go do something recreational, such as go to an amusement park, or to a movie theater, or to a play, do you think that they would go alone or in a group? Go ahead and make your choice quickly. I'm going to give you five counts. Five, four, three, two, one. Excellent. Now, hopefully, as you made that choice, some ideas popped to mind or you had some thoughts. So tuck those away because they're really helpful insights that come to mind. Next choice. If your character was going on a vacation, would they choose to go on a vacation in which they would stay in a tent or some kind of outdoor type of um, accommodation, or would they choose a hotel? So think about your character. Which would they choose? Five, four, three, two, one. Great. Next choice. 
If your character was um, sitting around a campfire or at a party or maybe a slumber party, would they be the kind of person who would be more likely to tell a story or would they be more likely to listen to a story? Go ahead and make your choice. Five, four, three, two, one. Now, before we move on to the next choice, I want you to think about what kind of story might they tell? Would it be a scary story? Would it be a funny story? Would they be trying to do something by telling this story? Are they trying to impress somebody? Is there a particular someone they're trying to impress? All right, next choice. If your character had an important birthday celebration coming up for a friend or a family member, do you think they'd be more likely to make a gift or buy a gift? Your answer might be, it depends. So if it is because you're thinking, well, if it was this character that they were doing, um, making a gift for, it would they would make something. And if it was another one, they would buy a gift. Then go ahead and choose what this, who the specific character is and then make your choice. You have five counts. Five, four, three, two, one. And imagine what is that gift? What's one thing they might make or buy? And then I want you to imagine that your character gets in a lot of trouble. Maybe they get pulled over by a police officer. Maybe they get called into the principal's office. Maybe um, they got caught cheating. Something happened. Um, whatever kind of trouble you think your character is likely to get into. Do you think that they are likely to respond with reasons and logic? Or are they likely to respond with tears and emotion to try to get out of the situation? All right. And we have one more here. I want you to think about if your character had to write one of these kinds of things, do you think your character would be more likely to enjoy writing poetry or to enjoy writing a fact-based newspaper article? And last, I'd like you to think about if your character would prefer to make a list to try to explore an idea or if they would prefer to make a collage to explore an idea. And I think that's the last of our choices. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second so that Catherine and I can talk. Cool. All right. Oh, man. Those were, those were some fun questions. <laughs> yeah, so did you... Um, so we talked about you um, thinking about your character from your novel that you're writing right now. Mm -hmm. And you said that you have more than one character that you might choose. So who did you choose? Yeah. Um, so I, so also if you guys want to tell us about the novels that you're writing, um, you, you guys who are watching, go ahead and drop it in the chat and we'll try to like read some sentences or like, I love hearing what you guys are writing about um, because it's always just so good. Um, so let us know uh, what you're writing about. Uh, this year I am writing an entirely new novel. Um, it's kind of a fairy tale retelling of the 12 dancing princesses, uh, but told sort of a modern day, uh, told um, in the framework of a high school dance company. Uh, so I actually have 12 main characters <laughs> and I did uh, give them each their own uh, chapter kind of from their perspective. So this building a character workshop is really great for me because I have 12 characters. A lot of characters to develop, yes. That I need to build out. Uh, so I picked uh, not the main character necessarily, but the one who's being sort of like the the main uh, the principal dancer in this in this company, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it was good because I was like, oh, I I haven't gone to her chapter yet, so I was like, <laughs> oh, I don't I don't know a lot of these, but I'll pick something. So. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, so just you know things like she would definitely kind of be in a group. I think she's really oriented towards that. Um, she's one of the, the people that kind of like um, holds holds the group together of the of the 12 dancers. And um, yeah, I don't, I'm like struggling to remember the other questions right now. Okay, no, no, that's fine. So um, there was um, the one about um, would they, would your character prefer to have a tent accommodation or a hotel? Uh, I think she would want a hotel. Okay. I think she likes being comfy. <laughs> Nice. And did you have one for making a gift or buying a gift? I think that's a pretty insightful one. Oh, yeah. I think I think she would want to make a gift, but I think she would end up actually buying a gift because she wouldn't think that a gift that she that she made would be good enough. 
So see, that's so interesting to know about her, right? I love I love finding those little details. And what's interesting, you said before that you haven't gotten to your chapter, so you don't this chapter of her point of view, and so you don't necessarily know what she would choose. Yeah. And I think that one of the things that happens as I'm writing, especially when I'm drafting, is that I focus only on the things that are going to show up in the book itself. Mm. So I know that my character is not going to go camping or stay in a hotel, so I don't ever ask myself that question. But I think knowing the answer to the question sometimes gives me insight into the character that I would not have. Right. right? Did anybody yeah. in the chat have any ideas about their characters? Um, yeah, a lot of, so I was kind of typing the the prompts in as he said them and a lot of people were responding like, you know, poetry, newspaper article, um, tears. Oh, somebody somebody said either one when you asked how people how somebody how their character would get out of a, a sticky yeah, situation. All reasons and <laughs> logic or tears. Um yeah, let's see. A lot of uh well, a lot of people would would choose a collage to explore an idea. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well I also I just want to read out some of these um what these novels are about because oh, please do I want to hear. Uh, let me scroll back up through the chat here. Um, let's see, Larissa Greeway says, mine is called Elemental. It's about a girl who discovers that she's a fire elemental. Um, Elizabeth Bridges is writing a bunch of short stories, but has chosen one to work on today. Um, let's see, Brandy Music says, my novel is about a half demon prince who wants to defy his destiny. Nice. Um, Oh, Rachel W. is writing a YA novel about a high school senior who believes she is Zelda Sayre reincarnated and that the new transfer student is F. Scott Fitzgerald, which is really interesting. That is interesting. Oh, man. These, uh, these, are, these are so good. I know I saw, I saw something about an alien, but the chat scrolled up, so I didn't um, catch that one. But... Yeah, a lot of a lot of really really interesting novels. I am so curious how to explore the character of the reincarnation of F. Scott Fitzgerald. <laughs> so interesting. Yeah, I absolutely think so. So um, to that point, when you are writing about someone who is a real person and you're trying to make decisions like the ones we just made, um, sometimes it can be hard because you're not sure what they would do. Mm -hmm. And um, but I actually think it's an interesting exercise for people who are dealing with a historical character or maybe you're um, writing about a flying squirrel, for instance, and you think, well, who wouldn't stay in a tent or a hotel because they're a flying squirrel? <laughs> and you have to kind of translate the choice into what would work for that character and then, and then see what insight it gives you. Because the point of all of this is that any question that you ask of yourself in this kind of a game is not necessarily to tell you, this has to now be in your book or this makes any logical sense in your book or your story idea. But that you know you're you're figuring things out about your character and who they are at core that help you to understand what kind of decisions they'll make in the pages of your novel. Great. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. So are we ready? Do you want to move on to another game? Yeah, you guys ready for another game? <laughs> I know there's a little bit of delay, so I can ask that question and then, and then they'll say yes, yes, yes later. Or no. no. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. You ready? So we're going to screen share again. And before we do, I just want to preface this. So if you're at home and you are going to play this game, you're going to want to get up and move around. So you might just want to step out from behind your desk. And if you are in a classroom, you're just going to want to be aware that this movement activity is not meant to be performative. So you're not necessarily trying to perform for the people around you. You're trying to just kind of get into your own imaginative space where you can think for yourself. So if it helps you, sometimes I think just turn away so I'm not looking at anyone's face so that I can really focus on my own thinking. So the first thing I want everyone to do is to just go ahead and find, stand up and find your open space. And as you're doing that, I'm going to switch over to the slides. All right. I'm going to find some open space off camera. <laughs> okay, great. All right. So hopefully everyone has found an open space where they are free to move. And what I want you to do is just shake out your hands, just shake out your shoulders, shake out your legs a little bit. This is kind of what an actor would do. We just kind of want to get our bodies ready to move. And then I just want you to start to walk. Don't do anything too complicated. Just start to walk. See if you can move around your space without cr crashing into anybody else. Make sure you kind of have a sense of, of the space around you that you can move in. If you're in a room with desks, you might have to kind of navigate some furniture. And as you're moving, just notice what speed you're moving at. Let's call this a speed five. It's your regular speed. 
Let's see if you can move at a speed seven, which is a little faster, but not running. So see if you can just kind of push yourself to move a little bit more quickly. And then as you're moving a little more quickly, I want you to only move in straight lines with 90 degree angle turns. So see if you can move in a straight line and then make a turn, and then another straight line and make a turn, and then transition into curving lines. And then just go back to regular walking. And you might wanna find your way back to speed five or whatever's comfortable for you. And the next thing I'd like you to do is I'd like for you to think about your character's feet. So you can choose the character that you used for the game of choices, or if you want to flip over to a different character, you can. I want you to think about what this character's feet look like. Do they have a certain kind of shoes they often wear? And think about what are they going to be wearing on their feet today? If they aren't human, they might have a different kind of foot. So think about what those look like. And as you're thinking about and sort of visualizing these feet, I want you to start to try to walk with those feet. If your character is someone who might be down on all fours, try to do this on your feet itself. So imagine you're an actor playing this character and how would you do it given your own physiology? So you're walking with these feet. And now I want you to think about your legs. What kind of clothing does this character wear on their legs? Do they wear pants or skirt, shorts often? Do they have feathers or fur or scales? And just notice how that might make you move. And now that you've done your feet and your legs, now start to think about the speed that your character typically moves at. And then think about your torso from your shoulders to your hips. And I want for you to also think about your character's hands. So think about what they might carry in their hands. Do they have um, a cell phone they're always carrying around with them? Do they have a bag? Do they not carry anything in their hands, but they have stuff in their pockets? Do they maybe fidget with their hands or play with their hair? Or is there any other habit that they have? Just kind of pay attention to what they do with their hands while they walk. And then I want you to think about their face. So usually on a regular day, what kind of expression might they have on their face? Now, I want you to move your way to a spot in the room where you feel like you can have your own space to work. I'm gonna give you three counts to get there. Three, two, one. Turn so you're not facing anyone's eyes. And I want you to think about one preparatory activity this character does to get ready for their day. So it could be putting on makeup, it could be doing their hair, it could be eating breakfast, it could be anything that you want it to be. Maybe it's packing their bag for the day. And I want you to make sure this activity has a beginning and a middle and an end. So they need to start doing it, something happens in the middle and something happens at the end. And you're going to have five counts to just play through this preparatory activity, thinking about how does this character specifically do this activity? Go ahead and move your body to the starting position. So kind of make a frozen pose of the beginning of this activity. And let's go through it and see what happens. Here we go, five, four, three, two, one. Great. Now what I want you to do is I want you to think about how they might have felt while doing that action usually. Do they usually feel a little sleepy because it's the morning? Are they usually very energetic in the morning? And then what I want you to do is I want you to think of a day that you want to explore in the life of your novel. So it could be actually something that happens before your novel starts. It could be something you know is going to happen later in your novel. And I want you to think about what your character knows about that day as they're getting ready. So they might not know what's coming and it might just be a normal day, which may not make this activity as, as interesting as if you think they're anticipating, maybe they are going to have to do something on this day or something has just happened yesterday and now they have to face it today. So now I want us to go back through the activity and I want us to add that emotion and see how it affects the movement that they do. All right, so go back to your frozen pose at the beginning of this activity and we're going to play through it one more time. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, now I want for you to go back to the beginning one more time and this time I want you to turn on your interior monologue. So I want you to let yourself not only go through the activity with the emotion as the actor, kind of playing out this character, but now I want you to do it and think about what would be going through their mind? What kind of thoughts would be in their head? So now you're really going to slip into character and let yourself listen to their thoughts as you play it out. So you know what's gonna happen. Go back to the beginning and let's try it one more time. Five, four, three, 
two, one. All right. Now what I want you to do is go ahead and stand up and shake that off. You can shake out your hands and your shoulders and your legs. And I want you to start moving around the room again, just to kind of let that go. And we're actually going to move out of being inside of your character's skin. And now we're going to be an omniscient narrator. So we know everything that your character thinks and feels, but we aren't necessarily inside of their body. And I want you as that person who's going to be telling the story at this moment, I want you to think of a space that belongs to your character. It can be your character's room. It can be a hideout. It can be their evil lab. It can be um, anything that they have a little bit of control over because I'm gonna ask you to think about how they've personalized this space. So if your character is someone who doesn't have any personal space, you can also choose um, maybe their backpack or their bag, something that they would be able to have control over. And what I'd like you to do is I want you to go to a door. I want you to go and find a spot where you can think again. Once you find your way there, three, two, one, turn so you're not facing anyone's eyes. And I want for you to think about what this door looks like. I have a door on the screen, but I want you to think for your character, is it an actual door? Is it Ivy they have to push aside to walk into this space? Is it a, a high-tech touchpad? Is it some sort of key with a, a skeleton lock key kind of thing? Think about how do they get through this door and put your hand on whatever device they might need to use to get through the door. I'm gonna count down from three. And when we get to one, the door's gonna open, you're going to walk into this space and you're going to be visualizing what's there. Now, if you want to, you can sort of move your body to these places and visualize and sort of pick things up. But if you don't wanna do that, you can also walk in and close your eyes and just imagine, picture it around you, kind of build this space around you. Here we go. So put your hand on whatever the door knob is and we're going inside. Three, two, one, open the door. And I want you to find the largest object in this space. It could be a piece of furniture. If you're in a nature kind of setting, it could be a tree. Think, go find what that largest object is. And notice, is there anything about that object that's specific? Notice the details. Is there a little notch on the side where your character ran into it when they were three years old? Is there some sort of sticker on the furniture because they are really into a certain band or they're into a certain um, club? Think about anything that you notice that's a detail about this object. And now I want you to find another object, an object that reminds your character of a proud moment. So it could be a trophy, it could be a medal, it could be something, a plaque on the wall, it could be just something that someone gave them. So if, go find what that is, and for a moment just imagine yourself picking it up and thinking about the moment that they got that object. Why did that moment make them proud? Now I want you to look around the space and think about how else they personalize their space. Do they put things on the walls? Is it very organized? Is it very cluttered? What kinds of things do you notice that they've put here because they matter to them? And then I want you to think about any objects that might have been given to your character as a gift. So look around, is there something here that you think was given by a special person and who was that person? Maybe there's one, maybe there's multiples. Go ahead and imagine what those are and give them little moments. And then I want you to figure out where they might have pictures in their space. So if your story takes place before there are photographs, they might have paintings or they might have drawings of some kind or they might have etchings. Think about is there any way that they could have pictures of memories in their space? And if it's a photo album, go over and sort of imagine picking that up and looking through the album and seeing what memories are contained in those pictures. Or if it's a bulletin board, go over and look at that bulletin board and imagine some of the snapshots you might see there. Think about what are these pictures and why are they important? What places do you see? What people do you see? 
And then I want you to think about anything that might be broken or irritating in the space. So maybe your character um, gets really frustrated because someone's always coming into their space and leaving something behind. Or maybe they have a pile of disorganized items and they wish they were more organized and so that's irritating to them. Or maybe something's broken and they haven't been able to fix it and that has been frustrating. Think about what might this be? And why does it frustrate them? All right, and then once you have finished, I want you to take a moment, look around your space, make sure that you've thought about anything else that you want to have pictured in this location, and then head back to your seat, and we are going to talk a little bit about what you discovered. All right, Catherine, how'd you do? Uh, well, I think. Oops, is there an echo? No, okay. Sorry, I thought there was an echo for a second. Okay. Um, yeah. So, um, so, go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just getting all this information <laughs> about my character. So, you know what I find is so interesting is um, every time that I go into my character space and I look around, I always see something different. So, I often look for something that reminds my character of something that they feel proud about or something that they're frustrated about. But I find different things every time I ask myself the question, and I find that really interesting, and it gives me more insight about my character. So um, I wonder if anyone, first of all, if you had insight in you, in your game, if the people who are watching had insight, I'd love for them to share any maybe one or two interesting details that they noticed about their characters in the chat. Yeah. And um, did you notice any, Catherine? Uh, yeah, I actually, I want to share a couple of um, uh, things that I saw in the chat, kind of as we were okay. doing this, that people are sharing. Um, MD Mathis said, suddenly my character has more detail than ever. Dang. Apparently my character likes feathers. <laughs> <laughs> feathers, I love it. Yeah, right? Um, Rebecca Ouellette said, oh, this is actually great. My character it kind of has a before event, a before an event that occurs and an after. And the way that she feels about her morning routine now is quite different from the, how she felt about it before. Thanks. Oh, that's really interesting. Okay, great. Yeah, um, and then I, I love seeing people talking about the the spaces kind of behind the doors. Yeah. Uh, so C B Disley said she has a garden to help practice her magic with flowers everywhere. Okay. Um, and Michaela Prevost said it's a door in her mind to the supernatural. So oh wow! I yeah. love it. <laughs> nice. Mine wasn't nearly that interesting. Mine was just my character's bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully, you you made um, some sort of discovery as you looked around. Yeah, it was definitely kind of, I think the the like frustrating, not necessarily broken, but the frustrating thing to her um, was um, a bunch of like half-finished college applications that she has lying around her room. Mm -hmm. it's one of those things where she just like is feeling a little overwhelmed and doesn't want to make that decision. And so she's been procrastinating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love it, I love it. Yeah, it's, it's so interesting. Um, and. And I find that some of this character development work, you know, this this is the kind of thing that then, um, when I described this session, I said, you know, you'll walk away from this with lots of ideas for scenes. And what I meant by that is a couple things. First of all, of course, you'll have some backstory that you can weave into your story if you want. But then thinking about, you know, now thinking about those college applications, you could take a scene regarding those college applications anywhere into the story, right? It could be an argument later with somebody about it. I mean, there's so many possibilities, right? Yeah. Um, and I think each one of those items can be a, a, a spark for something different. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I want to say, too, that especially during NaNoWriMo, I think it's a really good idea to be willing to write around the edges of your story. So, of course, you're trying to get your whole draft done. You're trying to kind of plow through from beginning to end. But if you're feeling stuck on a certain day, I think some of these types of prompts where you think about, okay, when was a character, my character very proud? Just writing that scene out. Often I find that when I do that, I'm able to put it in later in the book um, as a, a piece of backstory or just something. And it it helps me to kind of feel expansive about my writing process as opposed to feeling stuck in, in it. So, mm -hmm. um, so we are ready to move on to the PDF. So uh, the first two pages of it are a profile of your main character. And 
So the top of the profile says first name, last name. And so hopefully by now we all know, you know, the first name at least of our, of our character. But if you don't, don't worry because that's sometimes a stumbling block. So if it is, don't be afraid to use a placeholder name until you get there. Um, and also whenever you're given something about character creative thinking like this, don't feel like you have to start at the top of any page like this. You can always jump around. Um, so the thing I wanted to focus on, and I will walk us through this because not everyone has this PDF. So um, there's a box on this page that you can check out a little bit later, but the box talks about kind of what your character wants and fears and believes. So every character has something that has to change for them in the story, right? They have to grow from wherever they are at the beginning of the story to where they are at the end. So I like to think about Harry Potter as an example. Um, at the beginning of Harry Potter, um, he wants a better life, right? He, he wants to not be in the Dursley's house. And then, you know, very quickly he finds out he has magic and he starts to mistakenly believe once he hears the story of his life that he's the one who's going to, he needs to protect everyone around him and that he needs to make sure that everyone is safe. And he fears that he's the reason that people are in danger. And because of that, his actions are to always charge out and try to save everyone, which makes it so he actually puts everybody in danger, right? It's such a great situation for a character. And I think that this is something that's really helpful for us to think about for our own characters is that changes usually happen um, it, within our belief system, right? So we start out believing one thing, we go through maybe a really exciting magical adventure even, but by the end, the changes are often about us understanding something new or something different inside of us. We become a different person and that's why everything changed and, and worked out in the story. And so, um, so I like to just ask myself, you know, what is my character fear? And one of the things I do is I look back at the room that we were just in and I think about, okay, so, what do, I, what do I know now that I looked at the things they're proud of and the pictures in their life, their memories? What kinds of things do they fear? If you had to name something, Catherine, for your character, do you think you know something that she is afraid of or maybe something she mistakenly believes? Yeah, I, I think what she's kind of most afraid of actually is like um, disappointing, disappointing the people around her, like disappointing her family or um, disappointing the the other dancers in her company and because she she kind of feels like she has to to be the the one the person at the top who's kind of holding everything together right right yeah. so she's afraid she's going to disappoint everyone and she believes that it's her responsibility to yeah. do this right yeah, and so so usually those two things are kind of two sides of the same coin right we fear something and then we believe something because of our fear mm -hmm. um do you feel like that that core issue of believing that she needs to be the one who handles everything. Do you feel like that's going to play out in some way in the story? Is that going to be part of the central conflict? Yeah, I think, um, I think, I think it definitely is going to come to, into play. I think one of the things I want to do with this story, we'll see if it, if it ends up happening. Yeah. Um, but part of the reason I was kind of drawn to this is because sort of in retellings of this fairy tale, like, you know, there are 12 main characters. So usually they don't all sort of get screen time, let's say. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And I really want to create a story where it's, um, where it's clear that kind of everybody has something to contribute to what they're trying to accomplish. So I think one of the lessons she's going to have to learn is that she can't do everything by herself. Yeah. Yeah. And so what I will often do when I have identified this kind of a core question, something they fear, something they mistakenly believe, is I go forward into the story and I think, okay, so what scenes does that mean my novel will likely need to have? So there will likely need to be the scene where my character hits rock bottom, hits rock bottom. what would that look like? And where might she have a confrontation with some, one of her sisters about, about this issue? Um, and there might be multiple ideas there, right? Mm -hmm. And what I love to do, I always have a stack of index cards at the ready and I just, you know, put one scene idea per index card. And that way I can just kind of spread them out and I can start to sort them and I can prioritize them. I can say, I think this scene is more important than that one. But I also then rewind back into the past. And I think, so what was the moment when she started believing that it was up to her to be the one? Um, because I think that scene is probably really important too, whether it's just held in her memory and you never write it or it actually comes out on the pages of the book. 
Do it, either of those directions seem interesting to you, kind of thinking forward or thinking back? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, oops, there no Sorry. Sorry. There's no echo. Sometimes there's not. Okay. Am I am I echoing? I don't no. hear an echo. Okay. Maybe it's just me. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, we had an echo the other day in a in a video, so I'm like, ooh, echo. Where? No, you don't want the echo. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that's definitely interesting. Um, so kind of this main character that I've been uh, working with today, um, I have kind of been inspired a lot by, by Misty Copeland and um, the fact that like brown point shoes are available for the first time <laughs> since they've been making them. And so this main character is African American, and I think that's kind of one of the one of the driving things is that um, it's kind of set in a in a small southern town, and she really feels like she has to prove herself. Um, more than perhaps some of the other people that she's dancing with. Okay, yeah, I love it. I really want to read your novel. Hurry up and finish it. <laughs> okay, great. I'll I'll do my best to finish it this month. <laughs> um, I wonder if anyone in the in the chat had anything that their character mistakenly believed or feared. Yeah, let us know. Um, yeah, we'd love to hear. Absolutely, we'd love to hear. Uh, let me let me scroll through and see if I can find um, find anything here. Uh, let's see, a lot of people are sharing their their characters' names. Um, right ones here. We have we have a Skyla and a Kadir. Nice. Uh, let's see, Eleanor, Stella, Kelly, Chosen, but with a Z and a Y. Oh, that's an interesting name. I like that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see. I see some other ballerinas in the chat too. So. Oh, good. <laughs> some ballerinas there. Yep. <laughs> um. Oh man. There's some. Oh, there's some. There's some really deep answers here. So, let's see. Michaela Prevost says um, she frees the or she fears that freedom was not worth the war. Oh, yeah. A, a good one. Let's see. Uh, Constance believes that she's always at fault and that she's always the problem and never, never the solution, um, which I think <laughs> a lot of people can relate to. Yeah. Um, oh man, Kanisha Swafford says he fears that he won't be able to protect, protect his mom from his abusive stepfather. Um, Amy Lemon says, I found out that my character is afraid of facing consequences for her actions. Uh, she says that's definitely going to come into play at some point. And Sounds like a really great thing to play with, both in a <laughs> right. conflict way and also a humor way. I can see it going lots of different directions. I know. I keep thinking of that question you asked in the beginning of like, how does your character get out of a sticky situation? <laughs> do they cry or do they try to get <laughs> their way out of it? So I feel like that's going to come into play. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Let's see, Fenrir Aldrex says Cyrus thinks that he can't live up to the hero's name and that he'll give himself away before he can do good. Mm -hmm. Oh, Amber Farquharson says Amira fears that she is not worth loving. Uh, man, we've got some deep fears. Some really great ideas, really great novels. Yeah. Behind you, I can see it says the world needs your novel. And I just want to reiterate to all the people who are giving us Definitely. these really <laughs> um, they, these amazing ideas. These are such important things to write about, and and when they come out in our books, it's it's usually something that we feel so strongly about. It's something we need to say. And so I think, um, setting you know, joking aside, it actually is very important to put this out on the page. So I love that people are doing this. Yeah. Thank you for writing. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So um, the the PDF that I gave you actually has four pages. So the first two pages are a profile, um, and that that part we just walked through is kind of the centerpiece of the profile down here at the bottom. But then there's a number of other questions that might bring some other interesting insights, like you discovered as you were playing the games. And then the third and fourth pages are more open boxes. So if you want to use them as a storyboard, you can, you can draw or you can use words or do a combination. Um, and the first one is snapshots. So you're thinking about a proud moment and a learning moment. You can capture the ideas that you had in the game, or if you want to, you can add additional ideas. And then on the, the last page, finish the phrase when I was, 
with a line or two from your character's point of view, exploring various ages. So thinking about when your character looks back at, you know, when I was eight, when I was 14, when I was 12, you can think about what was their favorite age and what was their least favorite age and why. Um, these types of memories can really serve you well to kind of figure out who they are and who what their personality is. I think it's really easy to have a character walk onto the stage when they walk into your mind. And often there's a lot of history of that character before they got to that point. And that history never really goes away. It's all part of who they are. So it's a really interesting thing to explore in detail. And the other thing about the when I was, you can use that almost as a poetry prompt if you want. So it can be a drawing or it can be a poetry prompt and think about sensory detail. So really try to get into those memories. You know, what did it smell like? What did it feel like on your skin? Because that will help you really bring those moments to life. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely. I'm definitely going to go home and <laughs> so much fun, right? Yeah. But don't do this instead of drafting your novel. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've, I know. I've, I've been great. I was telling you earlier before we before we started the webcast that this is actually legitimately the first time that I've been on track with my word count in all of the years that I've done NaNoWriMo. So this is a virtual high five for you. It's awesome. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so good. Yeah, I love it. So if you're behind on your workout, don't despair. <laughs> like, yeah. I've been there. I know how it feels. You can totally do this. You can do it. You can do it. Um, so uh, I I was listening to an audio book by John Acuff, and he talked about the day after perfect. So mm. he's talking about what do you do? You know, when you start NaNoWriMo, usually there's a few days where you, you know, you're really excited and you start and you, you're able to write the exact number of words you're supposed to, or maybe a couple more. And then you get to the day beyond perfect where you don't actually, you know, meet your goal for whatever reason. And then you can just feel so discouraged that you give up entirely, which is kind of a silly thing because, you know, even if you didn't actually get to 50,000 words, writing every day is still better than not writing at all. Yeah. So just keep writing, you can get there. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know if you have another activity or if you want to move on to questions. I did see one question in the chat. Yeah, let's let's go on to questions. I would love to do that. Cool. Yeah. So if you guys have any questions about writing or about um, the activities that we've been doing or about Young Inklings or NaNoWriMo or anything, go ahead and drop them in the chat and, and I'll try to scroll through and answer them. Um, we have this really great writing question from Elizabeth Bridges um, that says, I'm having trouble finding any strengths for my character. Poor lady, what chance does she have if her writer doesn't even like her? <laughs> Interesting. So it's it feels like it's kind of two things because strengths are sometimes what make us like a character. But sometimes I like my characters because of their weaknesses, because of the ways that I can relate to them, you know, the problems that they face. Mm -hmm. um, I think one way to start would be to look at a character's weaknesses and see if there is a flip side to it. Because often, for instance, pulling back Harry Potter, his curiosity is his strength and it's also his weakness. And so if you think about, okay, so what is it that I know about my character? What are the givens? And how can I, how can I make that, you know, are they cruel? Well, why are they cruel? And is there something in there where they're they're also protective? Or, you know, is there some other, like if I had to turn this word into a more positive word, what word would come to mind? And is that true of my character? Um, I also think we can kind of manufacture them or just look for the, I guess the question is um, the, the when would they? So when would they be kind? When would they, you know, what would it take to have them be kind? So if you feel like, you know, your character is just an anti-hero for whatever reason, you know, what would it take for them to be the kind of person that you want them to be and trying to find some of those things? I don't know, that's what I would say. What would you say, Catherine? Do you have any ideas? Uh, I don't know. I actually, so I ran into this with um, this big long story that I've been working on for years and that I finally finished last year, but I definitely, by the end, I was like, who even is my main character? She doesn't have a personality. She's just here to make the plot happen. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I definitely feel that. I think I was, um, I, I was getting to this point where it's like, oh, she's just asking questions so that other characters can answer them and I can like do my exposition this way. Um, so I was really trying to find places where she sort of went against, went against the grain of what was expected of her. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so if she, if she was talking to somebody and they were like, oh, you need to do this thing, you know, and in my mind, it's like, you need to do the same thing for the plot. But she was like, no, I 
I need this other thing to happen. Mm -hmm. And only if that happens, then that's when I'm going to do this other thing for you. So yeah. it was kind of like, for me, it was discovering like what, um, what was important to her to the point that it, it sort of trumped whatever, whatever else was going on in the plot. Yeah. So you're thinking about the actions that she would take. Where would she force the action for it as opposed to just reacting to what is happening? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I find my character, so I'm writing about a character named Kate um, right now, and she just had her magic taken away. Um, and I often found that she had scenes where she was thinking, um, I wonder what would happen if I snuck out right now. I wonder what would happen if I did X, Y, Z, but she never does it. <laughs> she just wonders. <laughs> and so I started going through and forcing her to do the things that she wondered about, because I thought maybe that would make her a lot more intriguing and more active as a character. Yeah, that sounds really great. Um, let's see, we have a couple of other questions. Um, see, Chad Parsons um, said, do you have a suggestion on how to plot your bad guy's character? Um, so I know we've been talking about a lot about kind of like main characters, but is yeah. there, do you have any tips for like creating a really good antagonist? A really great antagonist. So I would say one thing that is actually very fun is to completely go through the activity that we did today. So this is going to be available, you can play back through it. So you could actually go through with your antagonist and give them, you know, ask them the same exact questions, but think about how would they go about getting ready for their day and what would their space look like, which is always really interesting because you start to figure out who this person is and what their motivations are. Um, another thing I really love to do is to write a journal entry from my main, my um, antagonist point of view, because I love to just get into why are they doing what they're doing and why is it important? What reasons do they say? Um, I, I find that my my antagonists always become more real once I've really um, started to understand what their real reasons are and what they're picturing. So if they think they want to take over the world, I have to figure out what what's their dream of what that will look like once they have taken over the world. Mm -hmm. so I guess it's in the, for me, it's in the specifics. Yeah, that's great. I love that. Um... Let's see, and, and Alexander Schmidt asks, uh, how do you deal with time, uh, like time zones or long events happening? And I think um, I, I kind of run into this too sometimes when you're like, okay, you, I have an idea of things that need to happen, but uh, over a series of weeks or months, like within the novel. So how do you- um, How do you make them all work? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I always feel like, you know, we can think of it as a negative or we can think of it as an opportunity. So in my my series from Sadie's Sketchbook, I had this problem because I, I needed the book to span hunting season. And so it had to go all the way because the book has black bears and hunting going on during the story. And so it just, it was, it kept being too long. It, it took too long and there weren't enough events. And so what I decided to do was to have my character write emails back to her best friend. She had moved away. And so the emails were the thing that helped me pass time. So all the boring time, she would just write a quick email about some of the fun things that happened during that time. And it kind of kept the energy up, but it, it allowed me to compress the parts that I wasn't interested in writing that didn't really matter to the plot and allowed me to have the length of, of time I needed without making the story that long. Um, but I love to think about I love to think about is is this an opportunity as opposed to a negative it, you know mm -hmm. that's a that's a great way to look at it i am um, i think i think actually the the way i've been structuring the story i've been working on this time is, yeah. is helping me a little bit with that because it's yeah. kind of like every chapter i get to do something a little bit different since i'm right. telling it from because you're moving from point of view yeah yeah so again it's an opportunity you can think about so how how do i solve this and in a fun way that works for the story i'm trying to tell mm -hmm. Yeah, let's see. Um, okay, BJ Jenk or BG Jenkins says, how do you work with or find a way through generational language? I'm in my 60s and my character is in their early 20s. That's, that's a tough one because um, writing in someone else's voice is always hard, no matter whose voice you're writing in. Mm -hmm. I um, Part of my job is I, I ghostwrite for other people, so I have to actually write from other people's points of view sometimes. And that can be a really big challenge. I think um, for me, I, I see it as a way to sort of immerse myself in the language. So I just try to make sure I can really hear it. Um, so whether it's being around people who are speaking that way or having someone tell me a story from that point of view and maybe recording it and listening to it on audio, um, 
I don't really like to go back in and just change out words. I like to I like to have the whole thing feel like it came out of that voice. Um, but I think that's one way to start it is to write it out in your voice and then see if you can write it out in the other voices another way. Have you ever had to encounter that, Catherine? Oh, definitely. <laughs> especially especially with this one, since um, I have so many characters and I'm right, right. in perspective and I'm like, well, I don't really have this, you know, but uh, for example, one of my characters, I um, made her move to this town from Boston and my partner grew up around Boston. And so, you know, I told him that and he was just like, oh, you need to make her say wicked at some point. <laughs> I was like, okay, yeah. Okay, right. Definitely. People from Boston say wicked all the time. Like, okay, so okay. like you know, put that in. Mm -hmm. Or um, I have a character who is Puerto Rican, and my roommate in college was Puerto Rican Dominican. So yeah. um, I kind of think about like you know the the ways she would talk, or um, kind of, I definitely picked up uh, like a few phrases just living with her that like started to incorporate my vocabulary. So it's like, oh, these are things that I can um, kind of put into this character and I'm definitely going to text her later and be like, hey, so is this thing like a thing that you would say? I don't know. So, right. right. Yeah. I also think it's it's good to just write it and then ask someone who would know because sometimes it's it's difficult when you're writing afraid when you think, oh, this might not be right. And then you're just sort of struggling with yourself through the whole scene. I think it's much better to just get yourself into that character skin as, as best you can, write mm -hmm. it and then share it with somebody and have them help you find the places where it's not ringing true. Yeah, and I think definitely um, going going into it with an, sort of an open mind or the thought that like, <laughs> I'm not gonna get this first time. So like, oh yeah, I guess <laughs> I'm gonna do the best. I can. <laughs> who knows better can tell me. Oh, yeah. What to, you know, yeah. Kind of the whole ultimately, thing. I mean, we're never writing, I mean, unless we're writing memoir, we're never writing ourselves. We might be writing a character inspired by ourselves, but we're never really writing from our own personal voice mm -hmm. um, as a character. So I think that, you know, it's always an exercise in, in pretend. Yeah, uh, I like Tesla the writer, I said, uh, Boston, native, Boston native here, I can verify that I say wicked at least. Wicked. <laughs> so, <laughs> that right. Go the right track. Oh man, I'll say somebody's having a good time. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that laughter in the background. I'm feeling. I, I can hear it, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> oh, Tim. Tim has the best laugh in the office. Good. Okay. Uh, cool. Um, one last question, I think, uh, mm -hmm. that people have been answering in the chat, and I'm, I'm also curious. Uh, M.A. Scrawl asks, what's your favorite author? My favorite author by far is Madeline Langle. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I love everything she writes. I probably have a whole shelf of her back here behind my head. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, I love I love everything she writes, and um, a close second, Kate Kate Di Camillo. I love her work as well. She's got such heart, and everything has such depth. Mm -hmm. uh, so both of them. Nice. Mm -hmm. uh, mine, uh, my favorite is Robin McKinley. Um, yeah. Yeah. The first time I picked up one of her books, I was like, "These are the books. These are the kinds of books I want to write. Like this. This is how I want to write." So. Yeah. And I think a close second for me is Diana Wynne Jones. I've been reading a lot of Diana Wynne Jones lately. And just, uh, Has Robin McKinley written anything recently? Uh, let's see. The most recent book she came out with was one called Shadows. Okay. It was a few a few years ago. She okay. she's one of the slower writers. You know, there's some writers who like come out every every year. Yeah. And of course, it's like you know your favorite writer is somebody who comes out with a <laughs> book like once every five years. <laughs> Of course. Uh, Maybe that's why they're your favorite because maybe. they spend all that time. <laughs> cool. Well, I think we're we're almost at time here. Uh, so I just want to say thanks to everybody who has been watching and participating and joining in in the chat and doing the exercises. Uh, you guys have been great. It's always yeah. super inspiring to me to, to kind of get this creative boost from seeing what you're writing about. and. Uh, you know, having having the interaction. Um, and I want to say thank you to you for, for hosting this. This has been really, really great. Um, are, is there any is there anything else uh, that you want to leave us with? Any any last thoughts? I just want to mention that in the in the description of the video, there is a link where you can actually go and follow up with another video. So it's, it's quick activity that will help you to develop the rest of your cast. So of course you can play through, like I said, through this um, 
series of activities and do another character. But if you feel like you want a different way to go about it, there's another game like the one we played today that you can play at that link. Well, thanks. And just a reminder, this is Naomi Kinsman of Young Inklings. So uh, there will also be a link to Young Inklings in the description if you want to if you want to check out that website. Excellent. Thank you so much for today. This was really fun. Thanks, guys. Good luck with your writing. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. -bye. <laughs> bye.